Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the rumours that are circulating and they are picking up traction and what I think about this and why I actually believe this is true. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about narcissistic relationships and why this type of thing is not a shock, in my opinion. Um, I'm also going to give a little bit of a rundown of what to expect with my video regarding um, the what I believe to be the fake pregnancies uh, and the children because so many of you have said yes you would like this video. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a rundown so you know what to expect whether you want to watch it as a series or whether you want to just watch the individual ones that are that that are important to you that's entirely your choice but I feel like if I set the scene you're going to understand the video that I'm attempting to do a little bit more hopefully um so that being said you can skip this part for the people that don't like it but grab your drink of choice and drop in the comments which drink you are choosing to have today while you sit back and relax and watch this video. Me, as always, with my cherries and berries. But if you'd like to add a little something something to that drink of choice, because as the flag says behind me, it is five o'clock somewhere. So grab that drink and let's dive right in. in. So as you know, a lot of the mainstream media are starting to pick up on the fact that Harry and Meghan have separated. Now, whereas this has gone from being rumours and not very well known magazines or tabloids have mentioned this, now we have page six and I think Ra, which are quite prestigious in the States. They are picking up on this. Um, and so this tells you, me, that this is happening. Now, over, I think well over a year ago, I was talking about their relationship. Uh, even right back in the very beginning when I was doing the channel, in the very, 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 very beginning with, with, with somebody, um, I talked about their relationship when we started talking about Harry and Meghan. I said from that point, even then, and we're talking over 18 months ago now, they're not together. And I gave it five years. I mean, after all, Meghan's own words, if you can't give it five minutes... Why bother giving it five years or whatever it was that <laughs> she she said at the time. Um, and also regarding the children, I said that I don't believe these children are with them. So obviously now it is coming out a lot more that due to financial concerns, they are separating. And it's, a of course, the way they're portraying this right now is it's a trial separation. I don't believe that. Like I've said to you before, I do not believe they're together anyway. I think the only reason they've just they've just gone along with certain things is because they've had probably contractual obligations that they've had to appear together. Um, and also the fact that they're trying to portray this probably through pride. Uh, because for the people that have said there's no way that they're separating, this is all a PR stunt. Um, again, it's we've got to remember that Meghan is a narcissist. It's image for her being married to a royal using those connections is th the most beneficial to her. Having a failed, another failed relationship is not beneficial to her in the eyes of uh, the PR system. So this would not be a good thing for her to have this circulated, which is why they continually try to act as though they're still a loved, very much loved up couple with the 
uh, constant displays of uh, weird public affection in the public eye. When you look at actions, especially something, especially to do with a narcissist, you usually find it's the opposite of what they do. So when they're out there in the public fawning over each other, well, it's her fawning over him most of the time. Um, it, it usually means that there's a problem because when couples are very comfortable in their relationship, they're very in love. They don't need to try. They don't need to have these huge public displays of affection. It's very much about the little signs. For example, uh, look at the successful couples like, um, you know, well, I mean, let's, let's use William and Catherine, the, the late queen and her husband. Relationships are not perfect. Um, but what you'll have is that you will see them just going out acting normal. You know, they're not, I mean, all right, I appreciate the fact that in royal protocol, you don't do the public displays of affection. But even if you take away from the royal family and look at other couples that have been together a very long time, when they're seen out together, they're not fawning all over each other. They might be laughing together or there might just be the odd snap, but it's not the way that they, that you've seen Meghan and Harry, well, I say Meghan portray the relationship with Harry. And the fact that they are constantly saying how in love they are. If you are in love, you don't need to say we are in love. We are a very much in love couple. You, you just don't because your relationship isn't about what other people think. It's about you. You know, if you've got a genuine relationship, you don't generally care what somebody else thinks you don't particularly care if somebody says, oh, gosh, they're splitting up because the fact of the matter is most celebrities know that the, that the media spin stories, make stuff up um, as long as they're OK and the, the immediate people around them know they're OK. That is really all that matters. Um, now, I know that you find that some celebrities do come out and make statements, but if you look at those celebrities, a lot of the time, few months later, six months, a year later, they split up. So a lot of the time when a statement is put out of, no, we're very much in love or, you know, we're, we're together. Um, the chances are there is trouble in the relationship and they're probably trying to work on it. But eventually it doesn't work and they end up splitting up. So with Harry and Meghan, I have said for a very long time that I don't believe they're together. And let me explain why I think that, because a lot of people, well, I've had a lot of criticism when I've said this uh, in the media, um, social media, that is, sorry, not in the media, social media, uh, because you get the statements of, well, how would you know? You're not there. And that's valid. That's a valid point. However, when you've been doing the job that I've been doing for a very long time and you learn to study people and and this isn't just about me. This is other people that have learned to study them, study relationships, understand about relationships. You look at what is not being said or you look at what is not being shown. Um, and like I said, there for me as well, I've learned to trust my instincts. And my instincts have said for a very, very long time that this couple going right the way back, I would even say to the marriage and maybe just a little bit before, um, is not a genuine relationship. When you have somebody like Harry, who is got, in my opinion, arrested development, he's got signs of a personality disorder. And these are just opinions. Um, and other issues. I think he's got, uh, he's, he shows just signs of Oedipus complex. He's very angry. He's not very tolerant. Uh, he is, uh, say, very immature, emotionally immature, explosive, disrespectful towards women. When you have somebody that has this type of personality, it doesn't make for a healthy relationship. Which is why that when he potentially met somebody like Chelsea Davey, um, and the other uh, girl, Cressida, Cressida, I forget her second name. Um, he he couldn't probably deal with that type of relationship. And what you'll probably find is that these type of young ladies probably were trying to be very tolerant of Harry, probably very forgiving of Harry. 
Um, but as it went on, Harry's behaviour got worse and worse and worse. And then there was rumours of infidelity, rumours of his paranoia. Um, and after a while, that would put a huge strain on the relationships, even to the point when you've got probably somebody like these two who were just probably a, probably a very uh, calming influence on Harry, but not enough to keep him uh, calm in the relationship. So I would say that after a period of time, his behaviour escalates and they get to a point where they've probably had many conversations with him and he's probably said, you know what, yeah, I will go and get help. I will go and speak to somebody. But he doesn't change and it just gets worse. And so after a time, these type of personalities are going to say, I can't do this anymore. But rather than say, it's Harry that's the problem, I think uh, Chelsea probably come out and said, you know what, I, I can't deal with the, the media intrusion. She was with Harry for, was it six years? The fact that she's lasted that long, I potentially would say that if Harry's if her relationship was with Harry was solid and there wasn't any external factors, she probably would have stayed with him. Of course, Harry blames the media, but actually what I would probably guess that it was Harry's behaviour that ruined the relationship. So then you have somebody like Meghan who comes along, who is narcissistic, who is seeking fame, is media hungry, fame hungry, power hungry, money hungry, you name it, she wants it. And it shows because she, there's obviously people that have spoken out about the fact that she is, is desperate to be part of the Hollywood elite, desperate to meet somebody. And it is also known that she wanted to meet a very famous, rich British man. And so, of course, however it was set up, and I have done other videos on this, she has this meeting with Harry. So what I would then say happened is that Meghan was in full love bombing mode, full sexual, giving Harry exactly what he wants. Harry probably thought all his Christmases had come at once, but you've got to remember that Harry is not particularly very respectful. However, he probably was uh, enjoying the fact that Meghan is attractive. And I, I know that some of you don't think she is, but I think, you know, she is. I mean, regardless of the fact that she's had a lot of work done since, I think, you know, you know, she's an attractive woman. Personality wise, shocking, but looks for some, especially guys, they found her attractive and Harry probably was one of them. And if she is obviously doing things in the bedroom that please him, maybe things that other women weren't, weren't prepared to do in other relationships, he's going to think that this is like, this is amazing. However, like with most guys, uh, at some points, even that gets boring because Harry is what I would call a serial dater. I think he's a serial uh, player. However, there is a part of Harry that is desperate to be loved. There is this childlike part of Harry that I think, um, that, you know, coming from the stuff that's happened in his childhood, and this is by no means justifying the, some of the things that he said and done, but I think he probably looked at William and wanted what William had with Catherine, has with Catherine. Um, so of course, Megan's done her research and she has seen that she and she wants in this circle. So she would have done everything possible to find a way in. And that means making sure that she aligns with everything that Harry holds dear. She trauma bonded with him with regards to his mother. She love bombed him sexually and um, in other ways put herself as a humanitarian, li in a, literally mirrored herself on the things that Harry is passionate about. Made him think that he's got a teammate, made him think that he has got somebody that is going to um, deal with the media intrusion because she's a celebrity. In his mind, it's kind of like, well, she's already been in that world. She knows what this is like. 
obviously I think it's completely different and obviously Her uh, Megan wasn't wasn't sought after like uh, some some other people are so in Harry's mind he probably thinks that he's got the perfect person Megan in her mind thinks she's got the perfect person for her because this is somebody in her mind who is stinkingly rich I don't believe for one second that she probably found him head over heels attractive um because people that are narcissists like Megan then that they, they are very superficial but it's not about um she would probably find me other men more attractive than Harry but what's attractive to her was what he represented he was a member of the royal family in her eyes he had power money he could open those doors for her that nobody else could so in her mind she wouldn't have cared particularly what he looked like she probably would have still gone with him even if uh, he was the most unattractive man on the planet. I still think that if she did, because it was never about him per se, it was what he represented. Um, obviously, I have spoken and done a video on the fact that I think the connection started way before that with Andrew, allegedly. Uh, and I think that gave her then the idea to go in. I think her sights were potentially set on William. However, that's another story. So, of course, then you have this very mismatched relationship that comes together, probably with very sexually to start with. Then you have obviously the fact that Harry then uh, probably starts to get a bit bored, gets a bit frustrated. You know, she's in America. He's he's over here. They've probably, you know, once the excitement kind of happens and he she's not there on tap because she's working at that time. So he probably gets a bit frustrated with that. Megan starts to realise that she needs to hook him. So obviously then what happens is that she starts then dropping little hints in the media. She starts hanging around outside. And then, of course, then the media break the fact that they, these two are together, which was orchestrated by her. So, of course, then it becomes public that her, which is I don't think Harry wanted. I don't think Harry wanted it to be public because it was very soon. Uh, but she did. She needed it to be in the media because then what happens then is that Harry then has this pressure of this has kind of got to work because she's biracial. The racism hints would have been dropped. You know, if you don't, you know, I, you know, is it because I'm I'm a black woman? So Harry would automatically probably start panicking because he probably then starts to think, you know what, this is going to look really bad if I don't make this work. Um, then we obviously have then all the stuff with her, her going to Botswana. There was the rumours that they'd already got married. And to be fair, it would not surprise me if they both got very drunk and drug fueled and had a wedding. Which probably is when she dropped the, oh, we, we had the wedding of three days prior to, um, because if you look at that, when she says that in the Oprah interview, Harry's head drops. This is not a man who was excited to be married. When she says about the fact that, and even though some people have said, well, this is when they did the rehearsal, she purposely said that. You've also got to look at the fact that she was, she got married to Trevor twice. She got married a few uh, a few days or a week or so prior to the actual big wedding. So this was either one of two things. Either they did get married in Botswana, but the, the palace basically said, this is, you, you can't know. So they then rushed the wedding due to the fact that they'd already got married and they had to do it properly. And you've got to remember, and like I've said, I think there is some blackmail that's going on behind the scenes here. And I don't mean like this is in the literal sense of, you know, you give me money or I'm going to say this. But I think it was things like, you know, you've got to go ahead with this. Otherwise, this is going to look bad. Um, you know, you 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 were the one that got me drunk and then you you married me. And then you're what you're not going to go through with it now. You know, this is going to, you know, I will. I will tell the world, you know, this, you know what I mean? This type of thing. And don't think for a second that somebody like Megan, a narcissist, wouldn't do that. They absolutely would. She needed this to work with him. She needed to secure him. And 
I believe she did. And then there is obviously the fact that I think there was also around in Skip's wedding, this potential of I am pregnant. Uh, not, but not really, but this is what she says to him. Obviously there are other things that I believe has come into play. So already you have got this very volatile, all over the place, on and off type of relationship. There was rumours of Harry seeing somebody else while he was dating Meghan, rumours of him going off and going to strip clubs and she was not happy about it. There was all these things that were circulating. And of course, yes, they're rumours. However, well, the one with him dating somebody else wasn't a rumour. This was proven. Um, but I always think there's no smoke without fire. I think there was something definitely going on here. So you've already got this very volatile, uh, bizarre relationship. When you see the engagement interview, you can see that you can see they're lying. And actually, I have never done an I've never done a video uh, on the actual engagement interview, um, and, and mainly because I felt felt that it would be too long to sit and kind of discuss the engagement interview. Um, but if that's something that you would like me to do, then let me know in the comments because um, I, I, I will definitely look into that. I have spoken about it, but I've never kind of gone through it and picked up on things and, and shown you what my thought process is. Um, so to me, it was very rushed. And when you rush something, especially something as serious as a relationship into the royal family, there, to me, there is there are reasons why this is happening. So like I say, you, and then you have somebody like Megan who would be very, uh, she would be gaslighting, she would be manipulative, she would be quite explosive at times, she'd lose her temper. So you have a very volatile relationship. This does not make for harmony. When you have this type of relationship with two people that are volatile, for, for a relationship like this to hold in, to a point, and I'm not saying that it's functional or healthy but you'd have to have someone that's very 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 submissive I think Harry has moments of being submissive but I also think he's got a temper and I think he loses his temper he's very childlike so when he doesn't get his own way you've got to remember he's used to getting his own way he's used to doing what he wants and he would not have this with Megan. He would have done it in the beginning because she would have wanted to secure him. So she would have made him believe that she would let him get away with anything. She would she would support him no matter what. As soon as she secured him, it, it would change. And you saw that. When she first started dating him, she was very doe-eyed. She was very like, <laughs> you know, it was all kind of like looking up at him. And it was, it was so amazing. Um, and she seemed uh, almost like quite giggly and, and sub, almost submissive. As the relationship started to progress, as she got engaged, you started to see her change. She started to get a little bit more confident. She started to walk in front of him. She started to, she was doing a lot more of the tapping on the back and moving him out of the way. And that happened most definitely more once they got married. It all changed. Once she secured him, that was it. That was it. And unfortunately, this is not like a normal relationship where, you know, you, you can kind of go, oh, you know what, this isn't working for me and I'm going to walk away. I think there was definitely something behind the scenes where it'd be like, if you walk away from this, I'm going to be telling the world that, you know, you left me while I was pregnant or I had a, a miscarriage or, you know, I'm, I'm a black woman and you just didn't, you just didn't want a black woman in the family. This would have created huge problems. Now that's not enough to obviously I believe hold a relationship and I don't believe that was enough for the royal family to kind of go well you must stay in the relationship with her because otherwise you're going to be accused of this um I mean that wouldn't have been great but I still don't know if it was enough but I do think there was something else like I said whether it be the fake pregnancy I think that she does know the truth regarding these well no think she does know the truth regarding these children and I do believe that is potentially what she's holding over their head and unfortunately, and I know that people don't like this, but I do think the royal family know, which is why I don't think they knew in the beginning. I think they were duped, but I think they found out. And I think that's why Megxit happened. So then you have the fact that obviously they left. 
Again, you've had nothing but narc revenge. These two are not happy. If they were happy to leave the royal family, they would have left and they would have gone on their merry way, done their own thing, and they would not have been trashing the family from the moment they left. They did not leave off their own accord. They were, I think they were booted out. I think basically the Queen said, we know the truth, this is not okay. You can't stay here, you're lying about Archie. Uh, you can't stay here because it would get found out because we'd have to, you know, when there's royal events, you'd be bringing out the child. And obviously if the child isn't Meghan's, she wouldn't be able to do that. So I think the truth would have come out. So I think they orchestrated this plan in a way to make it seem that, that Harry and Meghan decided to leave for a quieter, more private life. Now, obviously, we have what we've had. And we've had so many rumours of there's been fights, there's been the police call, there's been this, there's been that. And then every time something like that happens, up they pop with a photo of them out having a date or they're holding hands, uh, all looking all loved up. We don't see them out and about normally. We've seen pictures of Harry on the beach with a dog, no children. We've seen Meghan out shopping, no children. Nothing is normal with these two. We don't see them out and about, just walking around normally. There are far more famous celebrities out there, and I'm not, whether you like them or don't like them, the Kardashians are far more uh, uh, famous than these two and ha hounded by the paparazzi, Taylor Swift, Justin Bieber. They all still manage to go out, you know, J-Lo, Beyonce. They all still manage to lead a fairly normal life. They still manage to, if they have children, to take their children out. And a lot of the time, if they do take their children out, excuse me, um, the children are seen with them, but their faces are blurred. We never see these children. And I will be doing, I'll say I will be doing the video on this. We never see these children. And when we do see them, especially in the States, their faces are not blurred. As in like, by the by the media that tells you that they've been given permission to show their face now if they were so worried about being seen like people have said um that they think uh the reason why they don't show the children is because they're embarrassed by them well if that's the case then you could go out and about but the media if they don't get permission they have to blur their faces so we would never see they could be out every single day with their children and we'd never see the face of the child if they don't have permission to print it. The Daily Mail, when they print, when they put the picture up of this fake July the 4th thing, they blurred the picture of the children's faces. So they could do that. They could go out as a normal family and we would all we would see is the body of children. That's it. So ask yourself, why is it that we never see them out and about as a normal family? And the reason being... <laughs> The reason being is because they're not a normal family. I do not believe they are living together as a happy, normal family, going out shopping, going out doing things, going to the zoo, going wherever, because they're not together and they've not been together for a while. You have a very dysfunctional, toxic pairing with Harry and Meghan, and this would be explosive, which is why now we're having the things coming out of Harry staying in hotels or being separated from her. This has been going on probably for a long time, but I would imagine they probably, uh, probably what they probably did was they started where they lived, they got, they, they, wherever they were living, they were living separately. Um, they weren't together. So it could be believed that they were, but they just probably had separate bedrooms, etc. There was the, obviously the rumours they had separate bedrooms in Australia, which is very odd, given that that was around the time that she was allegedly pregnant. Nothing is normal with these two. They have not been together for a very long time. But of course, now everyone is now reporting on that because, and I am going to blow my own trumpet. When I first started talking about this, I wasn't, uh, I'm not a big channel now, but I certainly wasn't very big back then. But I, I said it, you know, so I am going to blow my own trumpet and say that I was potentially, that I know of, one of the first to say they're not together. And I've been saying it, the children, when it does come out and it will come out eventually, they can't keep this hidden for, for forever. I would have noted that I've been saying that these children are not, and I, and regardless of what people are saying, because apparently people are saying to me that other YouTubers are saying these children exist. Let me clarify. Archie is, it does 
but he's not Megan's. I do believe he's Harry's or, you know, and whether it was a, through a surrogate or Harry got somebody pregnant and I believe he's over here in the UK. Um, and Lily, no. Uh, I think that she was originally, so obviously she is a real child, but she isn't theirs and she isn't living with them. This is why we never see them out and about as a normal family. Um, so I do believe what will happen possibly now is that you're going to see Megan out and about doing her own thing. She'll be in talks with her uh, management agency, her PR company agency, whatever you call it, um, to set things up for her to out to be out there to be separate from the Sussex brand. Um, not that it was ever a brand in the first place and they can sod off with using the word Sussex because they're not allowed it anymore, I've decided. Um, and I think Harry will go to Africa or wherever it is that he is going to go to do his own thing. They are going to make this seem as if they're, they're just going to go off and do their own ventures. They're still going to try and work through their relationship. They won't. Now, that's not to say that Meghan won't try and hang on. Oh, she will, because there's money still in it. Um, the only time that we will see a divorce happen is if behind the scenes there are negotiations going on where she secures a, a financial, a large financial settlement. That could potentially be when a divorce happens. Until that, because it will be all about money for her. Um, and obviously, people will be obviously talking about the children, what's going to happen with the children. Um, well, they've kept the, the lie this going this long. You have celebrities in the States that don't really show their children very much, albeit that a lot of them probably aren't narcissistic parents. But Megan is, you know, well, or she's, you know, she's a narcissist who's allegedly pretending to be a parent. Um, so it's not going to be a stretch to think that she that uh that ha harry will she will either she will say that she's keeping the children so it'll come out that either she's keeping the children and it will just carry on as normal she will be seen out and about occasionally with a with a boy and a girl um so people will that's to appease the fans and the and the media to into believing that she's she's got the children over there and harry will be in africa but the thing is that won't look that won't make harry look very nice so I tr I would think that what they're possibly going to try and do is make it seem that that this is an amicable split, that they're going to co-parent the children. Um, we're going to see possibly Harry occasionally out in America with the children, um, but they'll do it in such a way, I think, to try and perpetuate the lie, because at some point, these children are going to get older and older. So I don't know what they're going to do. You know, I don't have all the answers. I only will say what I believe. And I have said, like I say, that they're not together. And when you have a narcissistic personality type, and then you have somebody like Harry, who I've said has something very similar to histrionic disorder um, with arrested development, it, it doesn't make for a... a healthy relationship this is explosive they were never going to stay together it was never going to happen these two types of personalities would never make uh, a relationship work um so this was only ever going to be a means to an end with with megan she i you know i don't believe that she had any intention of staying with harry I think she wanted she would have stayed with him if he if he would have uh, been compliant and she would have got what she wanted. But that was never going to happen because, like I say, Harry is too tempestuous, too dysfunctional himself and damaged. So this was never going to be a long love lasting relationship. Um, and then, of course, then you have... <laughs> The funny thing that come out, which I saw today, was apparently around the, 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 the late Queen's funeral, which is not the funny bit, but is the fact that they thought they were going to get a lift home on Air Force One. If that doesn't show you 
um, the ego of these two, um, I, I don't know what does. I mean, thankfully, they said no. Um, and it shows because also, uh, I think Joe Biden's wife, is it Jill Biden? She didn't show up for the Invictus either. Um, so it shows that they're putting their their support behind. So this whole thing about, oh, they're friends with the Bidens. I don't think they are. I don't think they're friends with a lot of people. Um, and you have the fact that they're constantly going at the royal family, which is making people turn against them. And of course, they've got their little few little psychotic fans. Um, and then you've got the flying monkey, Omid Scobie, who's obviously bringing his book out. Um, and then was apparently shocked that uh, that he didn't he didn't get uh, that he's been uh, boycotted by by William. <laughs> this man is just he's just as deranged as as, as Meghan. Um, it's like what do you expect? You've literally earned your money trashing the royal family, and you've become Meghan and Harry's mouthpiece. Probably more Meghan's. Um, so I don't know what he expected. He's a silly little man. Um, but he's irrelevant. And again, he's just trying to earn, you know, the funding freebies book didn't quite work. So now he's he's writing another one. And it and it is, you know, Harry and Meghan have come out and said that we're not going to talk trash about the royal family anymore. No, but you're just going to get your little mouthpiece, Omid Scobie, to do it. Um, it's, 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 you know, and this and this doesn't endear them to the public. People are just going to be rolling their eyes and going, oh, really? really again you know they're not people are not stupid i don't know whether what harry and Meghan think but i don't know whether they genuinely think that 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 people are just going to be okay with it and just be like oh yeah well we believe everything you say nobody believes them anymore their their reputation is so damaged now that i don't really think anything they say is going to be deemed as credible but there we go so let me know what you think in the comments regarding this situation. Do you believe, I know some of you think this is a PR stunt, but like I've said, Megan's relationship with the media, the way that she is seen in the media is everything. And her having another failed relationship, another failed marriage is not good for her. Um, so, but, you know, you guys are free to think what you want, of course. Um, so yeah, let me know in the comments what you are thinking behind all of this. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the all button um, on the notification bell. Um, if you want to buy me a cuppa, you can. The link is in the description box below. It's also right above the subscribe button. You can join me on Rumble, Instagram. Uh, I am on TikTok as the Tea and Therapy. Uh, if you want to come across and support me there, there's also another channel, YouTube channel. I would love your support to go across and watch those videos um, so I can get this channel up and running. Um, if you want to buy some of my merchandise, you can. All the links are in the description box. You can email me if you have any information that you would like me to know. Uh, I have got a backlog of emails. I always have. So I am trying to wade through them all. So if I have missed you, please don't worry. I will try and get to you. But if you sent me something a little while ago, then maybe resend it so it comes to the top and then hopefully I can see it because uh, I am uh, very snowed under and I, I just... I'm not getting through them quickly enough. So I do apologise. Um, if you want to join me as a Patreon, you can. Just, yeah, everything you need to know is in that description box. You can send me something. My PO box is there. I get some lovely letters and cards from you all, which I am so appreciative of. And like I say, I read every single one of them and I keep them all. I do not throw any of them away. Uh, they are really lovely memories for me and I absolutely adore uh, when I have moments of self-doubt, when I have moments when I think, oh, am I doing the right thing? Um, I go back to reading those letters and it just reminds me that I, I am um, and, I, and I love it. So thank you so, so much. Um, in the meantime, have a great weekend, whatever you are doing. And I will be doing a video on my other channel uh, probably tomorrow. So go across and give that some love. Um, but next week, yeah, I will be starting my Megan series um i've already done one so i'll be doing a second series uh where i will be talking about the narcissism i will be showing you how you can manipulate photographs 
uh, to show you how what I think they're doing in regards to these children. I will be talking about the pregnancies, the fake pregnancies in my opinion. I will be showing you footage, pictures, etc. I know this has been done, but I kind of want to do this from my perspective to hopefully show you the people who still think that she was pregnant. I will show you what I have seen. Again, you inform your own decisions on that. Whether you agree with this or not is okay either way. Um, and I will be obviously, like I say, showing you uh, some, some footage regarding this, the, the, the fake pregnancy. Um, so I hope you enjoy that. So it's going to take a little bit of time because it's going to take me a little while to do these videos. So bear with me. So I am going to probably do them over the probably a couple of weeks. Um, so that is going to be the next thing. Hopefully they will not be doing anything else in the media. So they will give me a chance to do that. So I don't have to stop and then do something else. Hopefully. Um, but anyway, so have a great weekend and I will see you next week. And you take care as always. I love you. I appreciate you. But most of all, I respect you. Mwah. Bye.